Hi there. Um, in the last video, we made a very simple crystal receiver which worked, much to our surprise and gratification. Um, but we never covered exactly how the crystal itself enabled us to hear the um, speech or music, so we need to um, have a look at that. And I've also made the set in a different format, which is a rather more convenient. Uh, take a look, it's down here. Here it is. I've mounted it on a uh, wooden baseboard and we've got uh, a couple of different components, so uh, let's take a look at those. Our old foil capacitor um, worked very well uh, for the long wave, but we've got to go down to the medium wave where we know there's at least two stations down there, and so how are we going to separate them out? It's rather inconvenient to slide pieces of foil over each other and then sellotape them to the bench so they stay put. So we're, we're going to use something else. We now have a variable capacitor. Here are all the plates and when we turn the knob some of them come unmeshed from the ones below which are the fixed plates and the capacitance decreases. Then when we mesh the plates again the capacitance increases and the resonant frequency of our circuit will decrease. The bigger the capacitance, the lower the resonant frequency. And the other thing we've done uh, is not to just have our crystal uh, lying on top of the uh, sheet of foil, which is very primitive. We've actually mounted the crystal in a little holder, uh, which I'll show you now. Here's an old fuse holder taken out of a piece of electrical junk. And on the left-hand clip, we've wedged the crystal in place there. And in the right-hand clip, there's a wooden dowel covered in insulation tape with a little spiral of copper wire, on the end of which is a small, as it were, cat's whisker. It should be made out of um, iron wire, uh, but I haven't got any, so it's a little thread of copper wire. Uh, but, as you'll see, it does work. On the board, the things are laid out um, more or less as the uh, diagram is, the circuit diagram. The aerial comes in here to the fixed veins of the capacitor. The coil is fastened across the capacitor and the fixed veins, because there's a contact on each side, come out here to the uh, crystal detector and the output from the detector and the other side of the capacitor goes to the output which is here and this lead goes to our amplifier. So all we need to do is to adjust the cat's whisker until it touches a point on the crystal which gives us some sound. Like that. Now we can oops, zoom out and change, alter our variable capacitor to tune in that signal. Here's uh, Sammy. On the way now, and turn the way down towards Long Lake. And there it is. Single. Goes out to Sawan. So, Bresden. Well, our radio works. It's also much more convenient to operate than it was before. Um, but we haven't yet uh, explained uh, how the crystal actually works. Uh, it's really very simple, but we'll, we'll have to look at a couple of diagrams on the computer. We're looking at a computer monitor and it's got a blue band running across the middle of it and we're going to pretend that this is the wave of 200 kilohertz which is being generated by the transmitter and sent out by it. Now, you can't, I mean, nobody really knows what radio waves look like and they're quite complicated but it's very common to represent them like this. If we zoom into that bit we still can't separate them. If we zoom in again, now they're beginning to turn into something that looks like. We do it again, and now, and one last time, we've actually got this nice sine wave pattern, uh, which is what radio waves are reproduced like, because this is how they behave. It's like a pendulum. If you had a pen fastened to the bottom of a pendulum, and pulled a piece of paper past it, it would be, do this uh, sign, this curve, it's very good. Um, but when we zoom back out, 
the waves get closer together until they just look what like one bar. So it's because it's 200 kilohertz. We can't hear frequencies of that. So how can we get a signal on top of this carrier wave? This is the this is called a carrier wave, and it's what the the, the radio station basically generates. Yes, the material we want here, which is speech and music, has frequencies in the range of 30, shall we say, to 15, 16, 18,000 hertz. These are quite low frequencies. Um, if we can impress the audio frequencies onto that carrier wave, uh, they'll be transmitted along with the carrier wave, and that's uh, what's done. And when the frequencies are impressed on the carrier wave, it'll look like this. Now, here is a carrier wave which has been modulated with an audio frequency. Of course, you can't see anything. We're going to zoom in. I shall zoom in here. And you can see some wave-like things. And we're going to zoom in again. And I don't know quite what's happening. Let's zoom in again. Ah, now you see we've got some another sort of wave. Zoom in again. Ah. And lastly, here we are. And now you can see the composite waveform. You can see the carrier wave, which is of a high frequency, 200 kilohertz in this case, there they are, and then superimposed is a much slower, lower frequency, and that is the signal, uh, which the audio signal, which has been impressed on the carrier wave. In other words, the amplitude of this carrier wave has been modulated up and down. AM radio, amplitude modulated radio. And so, um, there still remains one problem. Yes, the problem that remains is that it's in the nature of the, of the beast that uh, here's zero, the center line, and our audio frequency is impressed on both sides of the carrier wave. So this cycle, or half cycle, is cancelled out by that one, that one is cancelled out by that one, uh, so as this is received, we still can't hear anything. I've stuck a piece of paper across the monitor screen. What we really want is this, the top half of it, because then this curve here, this slow moving curve, that is our audio frequency, that is our program material. So how can we um, get rid of half, the lower half of this signal? There is a component that we can use um, it's called a diode, and it has a remarkable property. Uh, to me, they are amazing. They're one of my favorite components. It is a device which will allow an electric current to flow through it in one direction, but not in the other. And I think that's wonderful. Um, I'm not even sure how some of them work, but it's a remarkable uh, device. And um, that's what a crystal detector, uh, that's, that's what it does. The little point presses on a facet of the crystal and it forms a semiconductor a junction and at that junction current can flow in one way but not the other. So anything positive on this side can pass through the diode and anything below this line cannot pass through it because it's going in the other direction. Hence you end up with this, um, the, the, the desired signal. All these other waves, which we can't hear, the remainder of the radio frequency wave is sort of leaks away and um, we don't have to worry about that. We've got our desired signal there. Of course, it was quite fiddly to adjust a cat's whisker. I mean, I was quite lucky when I did it just then, but uh, you might have to try a number of different places. And some places don't work at all, other places on the crystal are not bad, and there are some places are really good. So it's all a bit hit and miss, and if the whisker comes loose, you lose the signal. So, of course, there were uh, permanent diodes were developed, uh, you know, very quickly, all sorts of different ones down the years, um, so that you can have a, a diode which is permanently in place. So you might think this was farewell to the good old faithful cat's whisker, uh, but no, not at all. Cat's whiskers are very much alive and well, and with us now. This is a germanium diode, which you can still buy. Uh, and it has a cat's whisker in it. Here's a germanium diode, and you can see in the middle it's got a cat's whisker which is pressing on, a, presumably a small piece of germanium, which would be behind the, the black band. 
uh, and it's permanent, it won't become loose. Um, and they're made to this day and they're useful and there's all sorts of different diodes which are used for all sorts of different applications. Let's put this diode uh, in our crystal set. I've soldered the germanium diode in place and um, turn up the volume and that's down the, leg side, the cricket is still going on and this diode is quite stable now I can tap it with a screwdriver and it stays put it's great and in the background here's our piece of galena crystal which uh, performs so well but it's now replaced by a more modern component well that's about it for now we don't want to make the videos too long um, of course, we're still on the long wave, um, well, part three, we'll see about getting down onto the medium wave and see what, if any, extra problems that brings us. Um, but, you know, just before we go, uh, you know I said I, I'm, I like diodes, I think they're great things. I've, I've got another one here, um, and I, I'll just very quickly uh, try it out and demonstrate it to you, because I think it's good fun. Yes, here's a little valve or vacuum tube. It's, um, it's under two inches long and it is a diode. It's a thermionic diode. Um, that is a valve and uh, it's got three pins at the bottom. Two are for the heater and one is for the cathode. And it's got a pin at the top, which is the anode. And it, it, is, a, a, it is a diode and it was used for all sorts of applications. They date back to uh, the early 1940s. Um, and I've got one mounted on a little panel and I'm determined to try it out. Here's the little valve in its stand. Um, we'll zoom out. And what we've got is the tune circuit, same as usual at the left. But this time the output goes to the anode of the diode and the cathode of the diode goes to our output. The two white clips, that's the heater supply because valves do have a heater or filament in them. This one has a heater which requires 6.3 volts to run it. Well I haven't actually got that voltage. I'm using that old computer power supply and that will put out 5 volts uh, and I'm sure uh, that will be more than enough and I'll just switch it on. And of course valves do take a little while to warm up. Will it work? Yeah, yes it will. Right, Alex, so so you see, uh, there's all sorts of different diodes and this one will work just as well as a germanium one. Now I'll turn it off. I've turned the heater off. But it continues to work um, as long as the heater inside is giving out electrons. And and as the heater cools down, <clears throat> Uh, it gradually stops conducting uh, and so um, I just thought that was a bit of fun to have a little tiny valve as a diode detector. Or is it just being stupid? I don't know. No it's not. One thing that is certain, it's definitely not a crystal set anymore.